Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy 3, I'll read, I'll start there this morning, uh, give you a bunch more scriptures. 2 Timothy is the last book the great apostle Paul wrote before they killed him, um, so this would naturally bring our attention. He talks about the last days. There is no doubt this is uh, one of the epistles for our generation, our age, and our time in which we live. And that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 3, every Bible preacher preaches 2 Timothy 3 and sermons on the last days and things like that. I'm going to use another word out of there um, this morning and, um, and bring the message. 2 Timothy 3 verse 1, he said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And the word I want to look at is times, the times. People say, this is the times we live in. People say, that's just the times uh, uh, that we're, we're seeing today. I build this message around a great song. Sometimes sermons are taken from songs and sometimes the other way around. The song I'm going to talk about this morning, most of you folks that are older will know and remember some of the younger generation don't get to hear many great songs anymore unless they hear them at church. And the song is entitled, In Times Like These. It was written by a lady by the name of Ruth Jones in 1944. Published in hymn books, her, her family was a singing family. During the times when they were recovering in World War II. So these were very hard times that were going taking place when this song was written. And if you know the song, it sounds like this. In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. I remember my mom singing that song when I was too young and dumb to even know what it was talking about. I know now. The next verse says, in times like these, we need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. And then the course says, this rock is Jesus. Uh, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Those are simple words. That's a simple song. The Lord, the meaning and the impact that song has had on literally millions and millions of people. Use that as a thought this morning. Knowing the times, and I'm preaching on the subject in times like these. I heard a religious leader the other day say on a, D, on a CD, something I was listening to, I'm going to try to get it and, and show it to you. They're talking about the foundations have gone out from under us. We no longer know where and what the final authority is anymore. And in our world today, we're living in perilous time. That word perilous means dangerous. Do you believe that? Amen. They said the other day there were, have been 90,000 Christians martyred last year in this world. That's just a rough guess. Probably a lot higher. 90,000. We like to talk about the old days and, and Fox's Book of Martyrs and old time like that. 90,000 in 2016 killed for their faith. We can't even relate to that here in America. Here in America, you have to about beg somebody to even come to church and enjoy God. In other countries, they're dying every day for believing the exact same thing me and you believe in. Giving their life for their faith. And because... Uh, uh, a couple of things I'll say by way of introduction. Truth has fallen in the street. Like it said in Isaiah 59 and verse 14. The Bible said truth has fallen in the street. Boy, that's a, that's a fact. It's hard to find and hear the truth anymore. Our YouTube listeners and emails is a good testimony to that. Because the love of many is wax cold. People are cold nowadays. People are cold. I mean, uh, because of iniquity, I mean, people don't care. 
It's hard to find anybody who even cares anymore about anybody else. And then there's scoffers everywhere. Everywhere the Bible is made fun of, made a joke out of, uh, perverseness everywhere you look on everything. I, I, I don't even like to think about this, but they say you, you hear about all this human trafficking, these uh, sex trafficking for kids. I'm talking little girls and little boys. You hear about it on these, in these crazy countries and everything. They're saying now it is so rampant in America. This is awful. But they, uh, on a documentary they, that Carrie was telling about, she watched part of it. I didn't see all of it. But they said when you see a U-Haul truck going down the interstate, you don't know who or what may be locked up in the back of it. That's how bad this country has got. We don't know the one tip of the iceberg. Brother, in times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. I want to say a few things this morning, and the first thing I want to say is this. Number one, we must be sure that we are in the faith. If there's ever been a time you need to know you're saved, it's now. You, I heard an old man say it, and you've heard me say it over and over and over. The two greatest things in life are, number one, to be saved and know it. And number two, to be in the will of God and know it. Do you know you're saved this morning? Well, preacher, I think I am. I hope I am. Maybe. I don't know. You're, you're, you're floundering. You're like floating out on the ocean somewhere with no anchor. No, you better be sure. Be very sure. Be very sure. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 that we are to examine ourselves. It don't hurt to just check up and say, am I really in the faith? Settle it. Once and for all, settle it with God. Life is too short. Death is too sure. Hell is too hot. Eternity is too long to not know where you're going when you leave this world. Ladies and gentlemen, you better know. You say, well, preacher, how do I know? The Bible said in Romans 10 and verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now get a hold of that. Get a hold of that and believe it. I'm not going to heaven because I'm a preacher. Get that through your head. I'm not good enough. I'm not going to heaven because I got on a tie or because I go to church every Sunday or because I have a Bible. I, I, I've been in church every Sunday morning. Lord, I don't even remember. I don't even remember. I mean, I've, I don't think I've missed maybe two uh, Sunday mornings in 40 years. And uh, uh, two, maybe three. That's something happened one time. Uh, but uh, anyway, I've, I've never, ever, ever had to miss a place to preach. God's been good to me. But that ain't why I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Not because I've lived right. I hadn't. I'm going to heaven because I'm trusting the only person who ever did live right to get me there. Understand? Just like I'm putting my weight on this pulpit. Right now, see this? I'm, I'm putting my weight on this. That's what you've got to do with your soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, if you die, if you had to die today, if you had to die today, down, down just there, brother, uh, if you had to die today, you've got to understand what if you had to say, it don't work like this, but if it did, if I had to die today, this morning, and I was standing here and there was heaven, and God said, uh, angel come out and said, why should we let you in here? Here's exactly what I'd say. I done got my line ready, buddy. I, I done know, I know what I'd say. I would say, Lord, remember the blood that was shed for me on the cross of Calvary by the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm trusting him. And because I believe that, I am guaranteed a spot in heaven. I'm telling you, my anchor holds, brother. I'm sure that I'm saved. I can't tell y'all how thankful I am. I hear the people in the, out there in the world, I hear all these different religions and how confused people are. Listen, there's millions and millions of people all over America. They have no clue. They don't even know where they're going. They don't, they, they're just floundering around like a bunch of lost uh, sheep wandering around in a pasture. I'm so thankful and so glad that I had a mama that knew God, my mom knew the Lord and she had the right spirit. She taught us right. I'm glad I grew up.
knowing that there was a God. And I'm glad I got to an old-fashioned Baptist church up in, in Nebo. And I went to the altar and God saved me. And I'm glad I got my Bible down and settled it and fixed it. I'm glad my anchor holds this morning. And you don't have to live your life. You do not have to live your life wondering where, in times like these, you need to know where you're going when you die. You're sitting in here and you're 16, 17, 18 years old and you don't know where you're going. You need to, you need to wise up. You ought to be smarter than that. God give you a brain. You say, well, Brother Danny, I go to church and I just don't know. Tell you what you can do. Get this Bible and go up in the woods and get down and say, God, if I'm not saved, I want to know it. If I am, I want to know it. By your grace, I'm not leaving here until you, I know that I know that I know that I know that my anchor is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust what Jesus did on the cross. Settle it in times like these. We need to be sure we're in the faith. You say, I just, I know there's people sitting in here. I know you're sitting back there saying, I just don't see how you can be so sure of it. I doubt it all the time. I'm not saying I don't doubt. I'm not saying I hadn't doubted. Everybody doubts. I doubt the sun's up there right now. I can't see it, but I, I know it is. Sometimes you doubt, but I know that God saved me. And, if, and here's the whole thing. It's what you're trusting. If you, it don't matter what you feel. If you're trusting what Jesus did for you on the cross to get you to heaven, according to the Bible, you're saved. According to the Bible. According to the Bible. Now, if you're trusting anything else, you're on shaky ground. Get this through your head. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ and what he done for you. Minus nothing. Plus nothing. Be sure that you're in the faith. Number two, we must beware of many things. In times like these, there's a verse of scripture in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 2 that tells us to beware of three things. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, and beware of the concision. Three things. What are those three things? You you ever seen people beware of dog? You know where they come from? Philippians chapter 3 and verse 2. But this is not talking about a a four-legged dog that will bite you. Although, uh, uh, you better beware of some of them too. One about beat me half to death yesterday with his tail. That dog had a tail that big around, he's going whip, whip, whip. And I was saying, get off of me. And, and I didn't want to kick somebody's dog right in front of him, but, uh, uh, but uh, he, he kept on and on. That's not the kind of dog that this is talking about. This dog is, is a Gentile sinner outside of Christ. Beware of dogs. The Bible refers to people who are not Jews and are not saved as dogs. How do you like that for a comparison? How do you like that for negative talk? Dogs, like a bunch of dogs. And it compares unsaved men to dogs. Somebody are without dogs. They're filthy. Their habits are filthy. They run around at night. Out running around at night. Got kids all over town and don't even know who they are and won't support them. Dogs. Dogs. Like some athletes and rappers. Dogs, according to the Bible. Amen? That's right. The Bible said beware of dogs. Beware of dogs. And the Bible said beware of evil workers. There's people working day and night. Evil workers inventing evil things, inventing more ways to sin. Sin has never really changed. We just have more inventions to sin with now than we used to have. All kind of devices, all kind of uh, pornography, and all kinds of things you can get on the internet and your cell phone, just all kind of just wickedness, wicked. He said, beware of evil workers. They're developing new drugs right now, right now. They're working on new drugs to get you high quicker and longer and better to get your money. And the love of money is the root of the whole drug business. The reason people have have the drug business is money. Uh, The reason people are in the pornography business is money. The love of money is the root of it. And the Bible said beware. Listen, in times like these, we better beware. Beware. Don't get hooked on pills. Don't get hooked on on drugs. Don't don't mess around with, with meth 
and cocaine and crack and all of that stuff. Beware in times like these. Beware of stuff like that. They're coming out with the microchips. They're coming out with things uh, uh, to chip their CERN, that big pit over there. Uh, over there, you've heard so much talk about where they're trying to open up the pit and they discovered that so-called God particle. And they say there's uh, unleashing uh, demonic forces and God knows what out of that pit. A one world government. All that stuff that happened in 9-11. There's so many conspiracy theories. You, the, the people that make the conspiracy theories are under conspiracy theory. I mean, everybody's doubting everybody. So little trust, so scary. Beware of evil workers, brother. Beware of evil workers. And then he said, beware of the concision. Those are people, the, the circumcision, the people who are, have other plans of salvation, uh, works to get you to heaven. Somebody like Oprah Winfrey, you should beware of evil workers like her. She says this, Oprah says that all roads lead to God as long as you sincerely believe whatever road you're on. I'm telling you, that's an evil worker. That's a false prophet. According to that Bible right there, there is one way to get to, G to God, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Not through another religion, not through uh, meditation, not through twiddling beads, not through saying prayers to or through Mary, not to saying uh, uh, Allah, brother, but through the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to beware, beware, beware of the concision. They're trying day and night to find fault with the Bible. Every day or two, a new song comes out. Somebody else comes out with some kind of sermon against the Bible, against the Bible, against the Bible. Beware of anybody. Go ahead and call it. Got a young man sitting right there. Raise your hand, Brandon. That took a stand for God in college the other day. Amen. And told his teacher he's going to stand with the King James Bible. And she, I guess it's a she, wasn't she? She said, well, maybe you don't need to be in this class then. He got up and walked out. Thank God, brother. Hats off to you. Amen. I'm glad a little bitty fella like that's got enough guts uh, to stand for the Lord. Uh, amen. Uh, but I tell you what, you better beware, 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 kids. Beware, beware of evil workers and many things. Number three, number three, let me show you what else we need to do in times like these. We need to be steadfast. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, be ye steadfast. Brother Mike touched on it in the Sunday school lesson a while ago. Boy, if there's anything we need today, it's to be steadfast. Like a, you know, when I think of that word steadfast, I think of a nail drove in a two before, about three fourths of the way down, and that nail is about that big. I never could figure out what nail or ten penny, five penny, four penny, but ever how many? It's a big one, about like that. Drove right down through a two before, buddy. That thing's tight. It ain't going nowhere. And that's what I always think of when I hear that word steadfast. Drive a nail in a two by four, and that thing stuck. Now that's the way you ought to be. In your church, in your Bible, in your stand, be steadfast. Be steadfast like a rock that's half underground and half out of the ground. I was over there um, at their, uh, their track over there at Todd and Carrie's place over there in Snow Hill, and they got a big old tree house out there in the woods for the kids, and there's a tree growing out over that river, and that tree's that big around, and it's sticking out about a slant, about like that right there, over top of that water. And you think, that is a heavy tree, man. You try to pick up a tree that, there's no telling what that tree weighs. That means it's got some roots that are going way down in there and grabbing all. That thing got something holding it, buddy. I'm telling you, you don't just, you try, you try to hold a, I mean, you take something like this. Try to hold a limb of a tree out over water like that. That's a tree that big around. You know what that? Roots. That thing's rooted. That thing's grounded. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a time when the whole world's against us. The spirit of this generation is absolute opposite of what we feel in here this morning. They disagree with everything I'm saying. I disagree with everything they're saying. Somebody's going the wrong way, and I know who it is. We're like, going, we're like paddling upstream, and the whole river is coming at us. I'm telling you, you better get your feet on the ground. That boy from, uh, called me from England last night. He kept saying, he said, you got your feet on the ground. You got your feet on the ground. And I figured out what he was saying. He said, I'm, I, I'm planted. I know what I am and I know what I believe and I know what... You'd be surprised. That's the people that just go through life doubting, wondering, where do I fit in? What am I? Who am I? What am I? And they can't, never do get it figured out. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be steadfast 
like a rock. Uh, uh, you say, well, Brother Danny, they're going to disagree. A great man said this one time. He said, if you have strong views, you will have strong enemies. If you have strong views, you'll have strong enemies. In other words, say nothing, do nothing, be nothing, and everybody will think you're all right. If you want to have enemies, say something, do something, be something, and you're going to get enemies. Say nothing, do nothing, be nothing, everybody will leave you alone. Say something, do something, be something, and you're going to catch it. I guarantee you that. Oh, be not idle. In times like these, we need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, we need to be steadfast. Um, back during, uh, before World War II, there was a lady named Nora Wallen. She wrote a book exposing Hitler and the Nazi plotters, and she called it Reaching for the Stars. That book got wide circulation and it turned a lot of people against Hitler and Nazi Germany. Henrik Himmler, who was Hitler's hitman, got a hold of it and he couldn't stand it. She was out of the country at that time and he got seven of her best friends and put them in prison. Henrik Himmler did. And she came back to Germany in 1939 and said, you got my friends in prison? She said, I'll give my life if you'll let my friends out of prison. And Heinrich Himmler told her, he said, if you'll rewrite that book and make it to where Hitler is the good guy, I'll empty the entire prison. And he made that woman an offer. He said, I'll let your friends go. We'll let all the prisoners go if you'll rewrite that book and make Hitler the good guy. And she replied, listen carefully. She said this, I'm willing to forfeit my life, but not my beliefs. American Christians could sure learn a lesson from that. She said, if you're going to kill me, kill me, but I will not give up my beliefs. You know as well as I know, 20 drops of rain keeps 19 Baptists in the bed on Sunday morning. Least little old bitty thing, we're ready to cry and give up on God. Ladies and gentlemen, God give us some people right here in shining light that'll say my roots are down. I know whereof I stand. I know what I believe. I'm willing to give my life, but I'll not sacrifice my beliefs. Let me tell you how times have changed. This sort of parentheses here. Henry Clay was running for office years and years ago, long time ago, back when politicians were trusted. And somebody said he was, a bill was coming up and he was going to vote for it. And one of his close advisors said, said if, if you vote for that and you do that, it's going to kill your chances for re-election. And Henry Clay looked back at him and he said, I'd rather be right than to be president. Compare that to today. Politicians today will say anything to get elected. Amen? Amen. Anything. Good, bad, ugly, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, whatever you want. Listen, Abraham Lincoln called for 500,000 soldiers to come and back up the armies in the war. And one of his advisors said, if you do that, Mr. Lincoln, it's going to kill your chances for re-election. And he said, it is not necessary for me to be re-elected. It is necessary that our soldiers get the help they need. And he, he was never going to be re-elected anyway. God knew his life was going to end, and he went home with that off his conscience. He said, if I go down, I'll go down like the Cumberland with my colors flying. I'm not bound to win. I'm bound to be true. Amen. Nowadays people say, well, I'll live right as long as it don't cost me nothing. I'll, I'll, I'll be faithful to my wife as long as somebody else don't come along. Wow, you're really a great soldier of the cross. I'll, I'll pay my tithes as long as I'm rolling in the money. I'll come to church as long as the weather's pretty and I ain't got nothing else I'd rather do. Hey, Hey, we must be steadfast. Number four, number four, we must not be deceived in times like these. The words be not deceived are five times in the Bible. 
Let me give them to you quickly. I'm not going to preach on them. I'm just going to mention them. Number one is Deuteronomy 11:16. He said, take heed that you be not deceived in turning after other gods. Ladies and gentlemen, do we need that in times like these? I'm telling you, everything coming along. Listen, people coming down the road, all religions are the same. That's all you hear. That's all you hear. All religions are the same. Talk shows are led by the devil to convince you that other religions are just as good as Christianity. That's right. That's right. And brother, uh, politicians, and, and say, well, don't you think we should be open to other people? No, not if you got the truth. I mean, I mean you, there's nothing wrong with studying, but once you know what's right... Once you know, do you think we should be open to people that believe two plus two is eight? Uh, do you think, uh, I mean, it's all right to say we can believe whatever you want to, but we're not, we're not changing on that. Two plus two ain't eight. It's five. I mean, I just, no, no, you know what I mean. Uh, but I'll tell you something, buddy. Listen, I, just, I, I thought some of you asleep the reason I said that. Uh, see if you was listening. I'm glad we can be not deceived. The second one is in uh, Luke chapter 21 and verse 8 where he said, false Christ and false Christ shall arrive. That's Kabbalah. Uh, all these Eastern religions, Christian scientists, Scientology, uh, Madonna, uh, movie star, oh, Tom, what's his name? Uh, Cruz, Tom Cruz, all of them uh, in Scientology and all kind of weird religions. You know what he said? Take heed that you be not deceived. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Listen, brother, we're gonna, if we go down, we're going to go down believing that book's the Word of God and Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. They ain't nothing never come no better down the road. We're not looking for something new to believe in, something new to join. Brother, the world ain't got nothing to offer like the hope that He put down in my soul. I'm telling you this morning, thank God, uh, we're not, in times like these, we don't need to be deceived. The next one's 1 Corinthians 6, 9. He said, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And no about the kingdom and the wicked living. You can't live wicked and come out right. You can't flounder around and sin. You cannot shack up and not be married. You cannot do drugs. You cannot get drunk. You cannot lie and steal and cheat people. And God's blessings on your life. Don't be deceived. The next one is Galatians 6, 7. I preached it last Sunday. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Five times. You'll reap what you sow. In times like these, we must not be deceived. Finally, number five, in times like these, we must be ready to leave at any moment. Matthew 24 and verse 44, Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. In, in times like these, we need to live our life in such a way that we're ready to go by the clods or the clouds. Either way, if he calls me home or comes after me, I'm to be ready to go. I asked you a question this morning. If the Lord come right now, or you had to die today, are you ready? You say, Lord, no, preacher, my life's in a mess. That's exactly why he gave me this message, to help you to get it right today. In times like these, I don't know this, but the time may come when it'll be illegal for us to assemble freely like this and me to say what I've said here. The time will come if we don't get out of here, if Jesus don't come, the time will come. What I said a minute ago about other religions being false, especially Islam and all those other religions, the time will come when it'll be illegal to do that if Jesus don't come in our life. Time will come. It's already that way in some countries. They said before communism took over them countries, it's okay, listen to this, it was okay to say God is good, but you can't say the devil's bad. We're living in a society where everything's got to be positive. That's why Dr. Ruckman says, find out what the spirit of your age is and fight against it. And you know what the spirit of our age is? Positive. Everything's positive. Nothing's negative. Nothing there. I was telling them that you're trained that way. College trains you that way. I get so sick and tired of hearing people say, uh, "Did you go to work today?" And they say, "I did not." Can't you say no? You're trained to think no's a bad word. See how you just went along with all that and been doing it for months and years? 
Did you get sick this winter? I did not. No, you mean no? <laughs> you say, no's a bad word. Don't say anything negative. That spirit, that spirit, it's sweeping us under, people. Yes, no. Up, down. In, out. Heaven, hell. See, that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it's always been. Negative, positive. Are you listening for the sound? I said this old preacher one Sunday morning. He's up preaching on the Lord coming. He said, the Lord's coming one of these days, y'all. He said, it's going to come. He didn't have his doctrine exactly right, but he's trying to illustrate the point, talk about the, the it'll be all the lightning that shines from the east to the west and all that stuff. He said, the Lord's coming. And about that time, this huge big light over the it fell out and but splattered in the, in the floor right in front of him. And everybody went, whoop, like that. And he said, see there? Just like that, the Lord's coming. In times like these, we need to be ready. I don't know what else to do. I preach myself silly. I preach hard. All I don't know what else to do for some of you folks. It's like you're lulled to sleep. And the only thing that's going to wake you up is a tragedy hitting your life. I, hate, I don't see why you don't just shake yourself and say, hey, I'm going to get right with God before something bad happens to my family and my life. I'm going to straighten up. Oh, be not idle. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. All right, Noah, I want you to, I'm going to let you hear an older version of that song. And This is our invitation this morning. In just a moment, he's going to play it. It's older. But I want you to listen to it. And it says, in times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. If you're here this morning and you need to make a trip to the altar, I want you to stand, everyone standing.